So I wanted to show how I connected a thumb to a WB-150 Komatsu backhoe. The backhoe was plumbed for a hammer circuit. And a hammer circuit only has one-way hydraulics. And what I didn't realize when I bought the thumb, I had this custom made. and welded it on. And, you know, we hooked it into the hydraulics, but what I didn't realize was that the machine was not equipped for a two-way circuit. I just assumed they built it that way, but they didn't. It was only equipped for a one-way. So I figured I'd shoot this video to show people that are in the same situation how to solve the problem. Uh, the first thing that I did is I had to get a directional spool valve this is a dual control, and I essentially intercepted the circuits. And you can see here that this line was the return and this line was the feed. So I actually took the return. Instead of going there, I intercepted it, went back to the spool valve. And the same thing for the feed. I intercepted it, brought it over and went to the spool valve. And then the directional controls went directly to the circuits. You can see my beautiful crimp job there, but it doesn't leak. And these spool valves, you know, they have a wiring harness, which I routed back and under into the frame. And I'll show you how I connected it up here. So at first, I actually had wired it to the switch that came with the spool valve from Summit. And it had a hammer circuit with a foot control, so I had to press the foot and press the switch at the same time. What I ended up just doing today, I had to uh, close everything back up, is I connected two relays and routed the wires up to the joystick. Uh, turns out that the joystick has a 12 volt hot and then basically just jumps one side to the other and the foot valve grab it here it's not a valve it's a switch the foot switch was actually jumping hot as well so all i really had to do was get two separate relays and find a ground which i have conveniently here and we were good to go so at that point, there's something uh, that I discovered when utilizing this I wanted to cover in the video. And I'll show some videos of this working later, but I just want to cover through the features and how, how we got to this point. The first time I hooked this up, I did not have this here. Uh, I didn't know any better. I had to figure this all out. And what I ended up doing was bending my piston turns out they sent me the wrong diameter piston anyway by mistake and it just you know when you curl the bucket uh, I had bought a spool valve with a pressure relief which is right here and I was told by Summit the company that claims they manufacture these valves uh, that that pressure relief would provide me relief coming back against that piston and so what I did, rather than hooking up gauges and everything, I just dialed the pressure relief valve all the way out to basically 400 PSI, I think was their minimum setting, which obviously should have easily pushed this back. And it didn't. So I learned that the hard way. And after going back and forth with Summit, who was really no help, they kept telling me that it would work. And I tried everything. They gave me a... Uh, a closed center plug, I think they called it, and it went in here. I installed the closed center plug, I relocated my hose connection, I did you know, everything I could, and nothing worked. The only thing I could get to work was this, uh, they call it a crossover cushion valve, and you have uh, pressure relief controls on both sides. And this one actually controls the relief from this side and this side for this. Um, so you want to control the pressure relief from this so that when the bucket curls against it, 
you can force this piston back and it actually forces, but what it does is it forces the fluid, it actually takes it here and it takes the fluid and pushes it to the front of the piston. It actually helps bring it uh, back instead of trying to bring the fluid all the way back to the machine, which is, um, you, know, you have a logger drag back there. This is actually much more instant. And again, I'll do some videos, but this turned out to work out uh, brilliantly, really. Uh, it's perfect. I started out with the lowest setting and yeah, I'm still kind of dialing it in because I pick up really big logs with this machine. And so I'll put my Allen key and do one adjustment and then I just kind of been playing with it because I don't want to end up with a bent piston again. Uh, but it works great. When I have a helper, I'll have somebody um, film me and I'll just add it onto this video so I'll make one longer video. Um, a couple points here uh, you have another option instead of doing this I could have crawled underneath and actually tied into the main return kind of look up in there and you see everything that's going on the main return is a big line that go actually goes this here this return circuit where it comes out here actually goes down it goes right into the tank and I could have intercepted that, but I would have had to completely extract all the fluid. I would have completely dumped all over me. And I would have had to have gone into the wiring harnesses to hook this up to install another solenoid down there, T into the main block. And after I add it all up, working under there in this extremely uh, busy uh, area where you can't really access anything... I actually found that this solution was better for me because I have actually more control doing it this way. I can see everything that's going on and um, I was able to kind of feel my way through adding this because there's a lot of unknowns. I didn't you know, have to kind of figure it all out as I go. Uh, the total solution, this thumb was 2,500, custom thumb, including the piston. Uh, you know, fittings, hoses, the valve, I think that was like 500 um, for all that, you know, all the hoses and everything. And this spool, directional uh, spool valve assembly was, I want to say about 600 bucks. And there's the part number I used. Uh, you know, some, it makes a good product. It's just don't rely on their customer service or their tech support for anything, any kind of real reliable information. Uh, you really have to do your own research, as I discovered. So we'll get some video using the sucker. Um, we'll see how it goes. All right, get this trailer loaded up. I actually loaded it with the backhoe. It's a single axle. It's a 20 ton, I'm sorry, 20,000 pound axle. And uh, you know these logs are about, I guess 12 feet long-ish. So we're going to bring it over to the wood pile and test out this thumb. So I'm going to pull these logs off. I was using this mini excavator. And it snapped. I don't know if you can see it, but it snapped that main pin lifting up one of these trees. Uh, it's just undersized, so I'm starting to use my backhoe. It's a little, it can handle it. You guys gotta get your position just right. But really, using the thumb for this type of thing is why I put it on. So we're gonna get set up, and hopefully, I got my angle right here. See how she does. myself so I'm not gonna be able to do much here with uh, being one handed at all. I think I pulled the bulldozer too far forward and I gotta tweak the angle a little bit. So anyway it's gonna make the worst video ever. I 
unless I can, uh, oops. A little hard with one hand, but I'm trying to get the first shot here just because it's fun. Okay, already gotten some logs off. Now we're going to uh, we got somebody else using the machine. We're getting used to the thumb. Let's see how they do. light on that return. Yeah. It's a hard time grabbing it because the, the thumb goes back. You gotta still adjust it. Nice. Nice having a thumb. 